Hey, you got a dad bod up here for sure. That's the way it goes. <laughs> Clay, I'm going to give you yours early. I saw you throwing your tickets today. This is what every dad's going to get right after service. Let me show what it is. If I can open it. Here, you come open it. You can show everybody. It's a nice pocket knife. Every dad, before you leave today, you're going to get one. So put it in your pocket before you let go. Well, happy Father's Day. What a great time to be in God's house. Amen? That video, if you don't know about it, 10 years ago, those same guys did that video. A little different than that, but similar. So now you got to go to YouTube and figure it out and watch them back then and see them now. So that's what they're trying to portray. It's been a while. We showed that video probably 10 years ago, just the new ver- the older version. Father's Day. I want to give honor to our elder statesman here today, Elder John Jones, 44 years pastor of this church. We honor you as the father of this house. Tell you what, I do not take for granted those that have led the way for all of us to have what we have today. Matter of fact, my father, uh, I would not be standing here today without the blessing of my father and the effect of it in that man's life, I will tell you that right now. Because it's the blessings of our fathers that make a difference. Thought I'd have a resounding amen about that. I want to read to you a poem I saw a while back and I've held it, so I wanted to read it to you today. It's called the Father's Day Poem. Starts like this. To get his goodnight kiss, he stood beside my chair one night and raised an eager face to me, a face with love alight. As I gathered in my arms the son God gave to me, I thanked the lad for being good and hoped he'd always be. His little arms crept around my neck, and then I heard him say four simple words. I shan't forget. Four words that made me pray. They turned a mirror on my soul, on secrets no one knew. They startled me. I hear them yet. He said, Dad, I'll be like you. Dads, be sure your children are always watching. Always, always watching. And you are the example. If you don't want them to be something that they shouldn't be, then it starts with how you are responding today. Fatherhood may have somewhat demised in our society today, but I'm telling you right now, I think God's perception of what a father should be has not changed. Amen? You're going to preach with me today because I'm going to share a few things I think are good for our fathers. So this morning, I want to draw the attention to the book of Genesis, talking about a story there of a father and two sons. And I want to share that with you this morning. It's talking about bestowing a blessing. And I think it's important that a father passes on a blessing to his children, not just sons, but sons and daughters. I am grateful today for my very own father. I shared with him yesterday morning as I was traveling to Abilene. I I gave him a call and we talked and it was wonderful because it was in a right thought process. Been challenging over the last several months. But yesterday it was as clear as he's always been. And I appreciated that. And I, I bless my father today. Pardon me. Genesis chapter 25. This blessing was given by a man by the name of Isaac to his sons, or his son, I should say. The blessing was intended for the oldest son. His name was Esau. But through deception, the blessing was given to Jacob. Many of you know this story. 
But as you remember, Isaac and Rebekah had these twin boys who were not alike at all. I want to read to you Genesis 25, 19 through 24. We're going to read quite a bit out of Genesis just to establish four points I want to make before we close today. So let's dive in. This is verse 19. This is the account of the family line of Abraham's, Abraham's son, Isaac. Abraham became the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean, from Padan Aram, and sister of Laban, the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. There's a lot of preach right there, I could, but that's not my point today. Dads, you need to be praying for your families. The Lord answered his prayer, and his wife, Rebekah, became pregnant. The babies jostled each with other within her, and she said, Why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. I want you to take note of that right there, because as we go through the story, you might want to remember that statement. Verse 24. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment. So they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. The boys grew up, and Esau became a skillful hunter a man of the open country, while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country famished. He said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. This is why he was called Edom, and you'll have to go see what that means. Jacob replied, first sell me your birthright. That's something very important you need to take note of right there. Sell me your birthright. Look, I'm about to die, Esau said. What good is a birthright if I'm dead, basically is what he was saying. But Jacob said, swear it to me first. So he swore on an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. We'll read some more in just a moment. But the Bible says here, Jacob and Esau came out of the womb fighting each other pretty much. Jacob holding on to Esau's foot. They were different from the very beginning. And and of course Esau, we see at the end here, not placing much value on a birthright that would have been bestowed to him. He had a enough thought of it to say, just give me a bowl of soup for it. You know, it seemed trivial at the time to Esau because he thought he was just looking at what he needed at the moment. And that's where some of us can get caught. We get caught at looking at where we are at the moment. But there's a whole future ahead. And there's an eternal life ahead that we all need to be paying attention to. Now in the 27th chapter of Genesis, the father Isaac had grown old. He had already had these boys grow up. They were 40 years, he was 40 years old when they were born. So now they're grown men and he decides it's time to pass on his blessing to his oldest son. Now, of course, the Jewish father's blessing was a formal thing. It was a very important thing. And I think today we should have some things happening in our world today as fathers that we should be carrying on some of this same tradition I think it's vital for us, and we'll see that as we go forward. But the oldest son who was to receive this blessing was not just a blessing to say, hey, I'm giving you a blessing. It was to pass on the leadership of the tribe, the family. See, Isaac was over the tribe of his family, and there was many. And this young person that was taking this role would be the next leader for the generations to come. And not only that, he also would receive a double share of the possessions of the father or inheritance. 
So the bestowing of the blessing was a very important event. So in Genesis 27, verse 2 through 4, I want to read that to you so you can see the correct account here. Isaac tells Esau, I am now an old man and I don't know the day of my death. Now then get your equipment, your quiver and your bow and go out to the open country to hunt some wild game for me. Prepare me the kind of tasty food I like and bring it to me to eat so that I may draw, so I may give you my blessing before I die. So Esau leaves to go hunting. And while he's gone, Rebecca, who loved who? Jacob. She overheard Isaac telling Esau to do what he was to do, go hunting and come back. I want to bless you. She seizes the opportunity to secure the blessing for her one that she loved, Jacob. Now, I believe she also remembered what I said while I go in verse, uh, chapter 25 concerning the twins and the two nations and the older would serve the younger. I think a mom remembers that, especially when she had been barren for so many years. She remembers what was told to her. Hey, that's something else. That's a whole other message in itself. Remembering what God's already told you about some things. We talked a little bit about that the last couple of weeks. Remembering what God has shared with you. Writing them down so you won't forget. And I think she wrote this down in her heart. And realized that Jacob was the one that was going to be the lead. But it was a little, disp- uh, little deception going on here. She quickly prepares some tasty food. And tells Jacob to go get some of Esau's clothes and put them on. To help fool old blind Isaac. See, he had already grown old. He couldn't see. And his eyes had went away. And so she put some of uh, his clothes on Jacob. And she got some old skin from a goat and put it on his arms and on his body. And had hair on him. Because see, Esau was a hairy guy. And Jacob evidently wasn't. She sends him in with the food to ask for the blessing before Esau returned. Here's what it says in verse 19 of Genesis 27. Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me your blessing. Now, of course, Isaac was suspicious. You know, a dad can tell the voices of his children, I do believe. But I'm sure Rebecca had shared with Isaac along the way a little bit about what God told her, that the older would serve the younger. I'm not so sure that there's some things between the lines that's not here in the scripture that he, he kind of understood, but yet he went on with the process, understanding. He said, hey, how did you find it so quickly in verse 20? The Lord gave me good success, Jacob said. Isaac said to Jacob, come near so I can touch you, in verse 21, my son, to know whether you really are my son Esau or not. Jacob went close to his father, Isaac. Who touched him and said, the voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognize him, for his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau. So he blessed him. Here's the blessing, and then we're going to talk about it. Genesis 27, 25 through 34. Then he said, my son, bring me some of your game to eat so that I may give you my blessing. Jacob brought it. To him, and he ate, and he brought some wine, and he drank. Verse 26. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come here, my son, and kiss me. So he went to him and kissed him. When Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him and said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you heaven's dew and earth's richness. An abundance of grain and new wine. May nations serve you and peoples bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers may, and may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed and those who bless you be blessed. I want you to look at what's happening right here after Isaac blesses Jacob. Look at verse 30. After Isaac finished blessing him. And Jacob had scarcely left his father's presence. His brother Esau came in from the hunt. He too prepared some tasty food and brought it to his father. Then he said to him, 
My father, please sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me your blessing. His father Isaac asked him, who are you? I am your son, he answered. Your firstborn, Esau. Verse 33. Isaac trembled violently and said, who was it then that hunted the game and brought it to me? I ate it just before you came and I blessed him and indeed he will be blessed. When Esau heard his father's words, he burst out with a loud and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me too, my father. Esau knew. He remembered. He sold his birthright. And now it was taken from him. That's the way it's going to be at that last moment. If you don't know Jesus, when it comes day that you are to face Him, whether it be at your time of demise or whether it be when the eastern skies open up and we see him coming out of the sky. He's going to say, I know you or I don't. You may have been in his presence from time to time, but it stays, that's got to stay in your heart every moment of every day, your relationship with him. Esau just knew, he realized what God's blessing, what his father's Blessing was all about at that very moment when he realized he had sold it all away for a moment of pleasure upon this earth while he was here doing what he wanted to do. He realized he had messed up right there at that point. We don't have a formality, as I said earlier, in our culture today as they did in Isaac's day to transfer the blessing, but again, I think we should. We should bless all of our children. I think all of our children need to see our example as a dad. Dads, I hope you're listening to me. It's very important that you are the father that you should be, that you lay your hand upon your children from day to day, and you bless them and you encourage them. And we're going to see that as we go forward and talk about this blessing. But I want you to understand your touch and your care and your time is so important with your family. I've had many touch my life. I've had great men of faith. Many of you would not know their names, but I'll name them anyway. A man by the name of James Kilgore laid his hands upon my head many times. A father spiritually in my life. A man by the name of Lester Summerall. I didn't take it lightly when he came and he blessed me in a service one day that we were attending. And another man by the name of Nathaniel Urson, men of great renown that have led many a people to Christ, passing on a blessing. And then my father, I could never, ever not cherish my father's blessing. And I know Esau realized he had messed up. I don't want us to realize when we get to that place when we're saying, wanting him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant, that we realize we messed up. That we got to a place where we didn't give and do and be faithful to what God had asked us to be. It's important as a dad, not just in this life, but as the life to come, that you're leading of of importance of today and of importance of eternal life with God to your family. I think y'all can tell I'm pretty, I believe in this. I believe in this. I know he realized he had given up an opportunity to receive his blessing for some earthly things. The last things I want to share today I found years ago. Many of you may know of this name, Dr. Gary Smalley. He wrote a book entitled The Blessing. I preached from it numerous times, and I felt it was appropriate today. He examines this blessing that Isaac bestowed upon Jacob. There's four things, four ingredients that I think every dad, every home, should be present in the home today. If you practice them consistently, This is what he's found out in his studies, Dr. Smalley. He said that your children will grow up to be solid, confident, secure people, able to do and function in this world with great, great 
expectancies. But here's the four ingredients from this blessing today from Isaac to Jacob. Number one, verse 22. Jacob went close to his father Isaac who touched him. So a meaningful touch, number one. Dads, it's okay to touch your children, to love on them, put your hands on their shoulders. You know, one of the things I always remember, my dad, we never, we never did a lot of crazy stuff, but we always shook hands and a hug. It was a, a reach for the hand and a pull to the chest. That I will never forget all my life. We have done it since I can remember. A touch on the cheek. My dad put his hand on your back. Just to, just to say, I've got you. I'm with you. I, I've got you covered. Just a hand on the shoulder. A meaningful touch. And then verse 26. Then his father Isaac said to him, come here, my son, and kiss me. So now this is not isolated just for this particular story in the scripture. It's covered almost anywhere a best blessing is bestowed. But something conveys, and this is a story that I wanted to use today. It conveys acceptance and love when you have a physical touch and some type of an intimate moment with your children. And I'm talking about a proper intimate moment. I want to make sure of that. Mark 10, it says that people brought children to Jesus. You can go read about it. And it says he placed them on his knee and he blessed the children. See, a father's blessing is so important in our lives today. Jesus knew exactly what children needed and that was to feel love and accepted. And your children need to feel that. He touched them and he blessed them. And that's what you need to do. That's the first point. And we need to communicate that. It's okay. I had little uh, Baker in my arms yesterday, and we were talking, and he, cuddling, he was cooing back. I love it. He's old enough now. He's recognizing. Just even my grandchildren. I, I got to not just touch and love on my, my kids. I got to love on my grandchildren. I want them to know that Pops loves them. I would die for my family. Come on, Dad. You know you would do the same. But that's so important that we follow that. It's important to... Bring that into our homes and demonstrate that. Jacob was 40 years old when Isaac touched and kissed him to convey that blessing. Older men, it doesn't matter. They're still your family. They're still your kids. That's still your parents. That's still your child. Second ingredient. A spoken message of affection and love. Not just a touch and a kiss, but confirmation of that. Look at verse 27. Listen to what Isaac said to him while he blessed him. Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field. Now, I'm some of you ladies, you probably wouldn't want to hear that. Right? <laughs> you want to hear them say, that, that perfume smells great. You know, you, you smell so beautiful. But here Isaac may be telling him, you smell like the field. <laughs> but Isaac in his time was an outdoorsman type individual. He loved that same type of understanding. And he was speaking to Esau in his mind. And he was saying, a man of the field, you smell awesome. You are awesome. And see, that's what we should be doing, complimenting our children. Because we know that's a love and affection that's supposed to be given. As a dad, don't just be silent and expect them to think that you are loving them and caring for them. You got to touch, you got to give affection, and you got to share that affection with your mouth. You see, too often parents are quick to criticize instead of caring and loving. We're so quick to say their mistakes, but we don't point out the positives. You dummy, you spilled the milk. You're lazy. Get up. Get out of here. Get outside. I could go. I'm not going to say any more about that. But your criticism causes a child to withdraw. How about some positive words? 
think there's room for constructive criticism. Don't get me wrong. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying there has to be a positive influence with what is constructive. I want my children to know their worth. That they have a place in my heart. See, that's what God does. He gives you constructive criticism, but he loves you. He cares for you. Gives you those intimate moments. I, a while ago, I guess the words from that song, Jeremiah, thank you for blessing us with that song you sang a while ago. Made me want to lean in a little bit closer. You know, you just, you got those times in your life, and I just wanted to lean in and feel God's love in my life. See, that's the way children are. They need that. Dads, they need you to touch and cuddle and, and then speak confidence into them. I want my children to know I love them and my grandchildren. You know that verse that says I should pass on an inheritance to my children and my children's children? It's not just talking about your wealth. Hello? It's talking about yourself, your values, your manhood. Dads, by the way, real men do hug and cry. And they get weak at the knees over their children. Third ingredient, and I'm getting close to finishing. The attribution of a high value. Look at the verse 28, or verse chapter 27. May God give you of heaven's dew and of earth's richness, an abundance of grain and new wine. Isaac's saying right here, you're special, so God will give you the best he has. That's what I'm blessing you with is the blessings of God from the heavens and from his earth. See, that's the only place we can really receive the blessing anyway either from the material things of this earth or from the glory of God shining down on your life. And let me tell you, I think we need both. I think it's okay to have the blessings of material, but I also want the most of all the blessings from God. And I want my children to have that. The Scripture constantly tells us that we should teach our children to have a good, positive self-image and also to build up their self-esteem and tell them they're valuable. Tell them their blessings is so from God, not from me. It's not from me that I give. It's from God's blessings of the earth and of his presence in our lives that we should be sharing. It's important to teach them you're valuable that God even came to this world and he died for them on a cross. That's another great blessing. Values. Value of who God is. That's the most important passing on that you could ever do, dads, is to tell your children about God. Not just telling, but as I said earlier, being the example, showing up, being the man. Not just the man physically, I can do this. Hey, I've learned a long time ago, at 56 years old, I can't carry physical weight like I did when I was 20. I still try sometimes and I pay the price. But I can sure put the strength of God in my life and pass that strength on. It gets stronger and stronger every day as long as I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. If I'm growing, if I'm teaching and living the values that I'm wanting to share, I have to be that. And I can continue to do that. My my physical body is going to get less and less and less as I grow older. I understand that. But my spiritual stature should grow stronger and stronger and bigger and wider to carry the burdens of my family. Come on, dads. It's not just by words. You teach by many other ways. So when a person, a child of yours comes and, and this is where I, I have worked on myself. So I wanted to share this point. When a child, your child, or anyone comes to the room and wants to speak to you, turn off the TV. Stop what you're doing. Put it down. Get off the phone. Look them in the eye. Give them that moment because they will value it. They will 
And I, I have to, had to apologize, I know, to many. I'm sorry. I, I get distracted because I want to reach everything and do everything. But I, I have to take that moment. We first got married. Lisa, she would, she'd walk in the room want to tell me something. I hear what she says, but she didn't see me look her in the eye. She says, turn off the TV and look at me. Moms, I'm talking to you too today, by the way. Fourth ingredient to bless your children. The picture of a glorious future. Genesis 29, 27, 29. Isaac says to Jacob, May nations serve you. And peoples bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed and those who bless you be blessed. Right here, I believe Isaac is helping to him to raise his sights to see the future is bright. You know, one of the things that I've told my, my wife when we had children and as they began to venture into what they dream to be in life what they desire I said our desires are going to grow but it's our responsibility right now to push their dreams to help them have a platform to spring from I've seen a lot of parents not give to their children along the way and pushing them to places of brighter futures and they only pushed themselves and didn't bring their children with them didn't push them forward and I think that's wrong that's my personal opinion but I I also have a backup right here in Genesis this is an important responsibility of parents we all know the passage in Proverbs I say it quite often in times of dedication train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he won't depart we've always made a spiritual application out of that teaching them the things of God and when they're old they won't forsake them and that's important but there's another application there we're here as parents as fathers as mothers to help our children find their niche or their dreams now I got grandkids I want a blessing I want them to be a blessing You know, I've learned that a lot of people want to bless others, but you can't bless others unless you are blessed yourself. Hello? See, I've learned, there was a man told me one time, I was a young preacher, and I was visiting with him in Louisiana. He was cleaning out a gutter at a church camp. I was helping him. Had a ladder. Of course, he was sending me up to do the work, you know. But I came down from the ladder to move over to the next section of the gutter. And he said, Philip, what do you want to do in life? What are you trying to accomplish? And I said, well, I just want to serve God and I want to help people find God. He said, and I've shared this before. He reached in his pocket. I don't know if he knew he was going to share that illustration with me that day or not pulled out one of those little monkeys from the barrel of monkeys. Y'all remember those? Had the little hooks like that. And he said, Philip, he said, you need to be like this monkey right here. You need to hook on to something that's higher than you. And then hook on something that's a little less than you, people-wise. And as they pull you up, guess what? You get pulled up in the middle. As you lift others and you pull others, you're you're helping everybody move to a better level in life. We're here. Fathers, mothers, God made our children as gifts. It's our responsibility to lift them. If you notice, 
you don't get out of the path. So it all stays together. They're not going to pass you up. Oh, they may succeed in some things that you wished you would have, but bottom line is you're succeeding too when your children succeed. That's you passed on to them. See, God's wanting us. He's passed on to us some great things. A foresight of what is to come. Some things that we should be doing. And he's watched us. And he's blessed us. And now we're pulling others generation after generation to be servants of God. I want to be that kind of dad. I want to be that kind of father. I don't want to be one that's talked about that he was never there. And I'm sorry, and I apologize for those that maybe you're here today, and your father has not been the true father that he should have been. I can't go back and heal those wounds, but I know a God that can. And you can trust in him to never let you down to always increase your steps to always bless I think this kind of blessing is what our families and our society is missing it's the mortar that binds and grows great kids great adults our society is missing that so greatly so come on dads come on moms you gotta be a meaningful touch, a spoken word, attributing to someone high value that they're worth something, and then picturing and helping them see a glorious future. One thing I want to share before I close, one last verse. Again, to those that maybe not have had the perfect parent but God conveys his perfect fatherhood to us. And it's a verse that you've heard so many times. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This morning, this, is a, this verse is a loving father reaching down, sharing his love, that touch, speaking to us, telling us how valuable we are, that he gave his most valuable possession for us. He's telling you how valuable you are. And he's pointing to a glorious future of eternal life with him. See, he's portrayed it all. The story of Isaac, Esau, and Jacob is just a portrayal of what's to come in the natural reality of your life when it comes to heaven or hell. You choose. You choose what blessing you obtain. This is the greatest blessing of all from our Heavenly Father that we could ever have is His grace that has been shed for us. His blood was shed for that grace and it's for us. I'm going to ask you to stand. A father's blessing. I've shared this many times and I'll share it here in my closing today. I mentioned names of men that I have respected. But I don't just respect them because of who they were in name. I respect them because of their example their consistency again I said some of you wouldn't even know their names some of you may but to me they are important it's not because they were famous it's not because they did something that was just super extravagant that I took notice it was because of the consistency across the board in their lives I could name other men a man by the name of Ronnie Gidros. A man by the name of Barkley Barnett. A 
man by the name of Ralph Phillips. A Mark Jones. A George Smith. A Kenneth Pierce. A Franklin Jones. I got many more. Heroes. Dad, be the hero for your children. Father, thank you. Thank you for your blessings of great, great people, moms and dads that have led their children to you. Father, that's what you're trying to do for all of us by sharing your son. Thank you for the grace. To save us from our own sins. Our own imperfections. Our own ways of immaturity. Father, I pray right now in just a moment there may be some that just need a touch from you, a Father's touch, a strengthening of life, a saving of a soul. Father, that they would maybe come to this altar today seeking you as a true Father, as a true Savior, as a true guide to this life. I pray, Father, you would touch them and save their soul, forgive their sins. Help us all to be closer to you today. We want to remember who you are, a great, great Father. Thank you for this day. 